Hello, and uh, welcome back to me. I spent last week in Malta um, eating rabbit food, essentially, and drinking kale juice uh, as part of trying to calm down after what has been quite an intense month now. But actually, if you think about it, several years since the uh, infamous question time appearance in January 2020. So we're, we're coming up to year four of um, having the wrong opinions repeatedly, which is very, very bad. And I'm very, very sorry. No, I'm not. Um, what do we want to talk about today? Um, yeah, I'm particularly amazed. You know, not much surprises me in life, but I'm absolutely shocked by the um, the anti-Semitism uh, we're seeing in London and the, either defacing or tearing down of posters of hostage children and women. What does that say about this country that you can remove those, can uh, try and wipe out those memories, obliterate actual human emblems which are on these posters, but any criticism of anything else done by this mayor in this city is jumped on, and you know what we're talking about, like a hammer and a boot down on the neck of any dissenting views. It makes me feel very, very worried for England. And those that wave the flag in support of Hamas, which is a prescribed terrorist organisation, whether the BBC can say so or not, um, I think should ev every single one of them should be deported and removed. In fact, I think Trump's travel ban in America was exactly the right thing. There should be a list of countries, especially countries that promote terrorism or uh, countries that harbour terrorists, uh, where there should be an absolute 100% travel ban to this country because we're going to lose our country if we carry on like this. I can't see, I didn't, I didn't see any police. I saw one police go, uh, here, this is a sign saying, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free, which is calling for the eradication of Israel. Uh, and the police said, did anyone see this incident happen? But they still managed to find enough coppers to intimidate Sadiq Khan's political rivals. So I would say that these people need to be removed from the UK and it's an absolute tragedy. And it's, and it's a day marked in history for me that two Fridays ago, Jewish kids were too scared to go to school. And then the other thing that's come with this, actually, is I see that it is, is a, just a complete repurposing of the BLM movement. It's exactly the same players have just jumped up and now they're calling for the eradication of Israel and the Jews. No wonder the Jews are feeling terrified. Even some of our woker left wing Jews are saying um, they don't recognise London. And it has, we have seen an explosion. Uh, of anti-Semitism. So that should be utterly condemned. Uh, but in the same breath, it's just appalling what is happening to the people of Palestine who, who the cowardly terrorists of Hamas hide behind and use as human shields. And you can't send out your love and thoughts and prayers and hopes for the safe survival of Jewish children without applying exactly the same views to the innocence of Palestine. So, um, what a horrible, dire situation. And, and, you know, essentially, it feels that there's something so febrile and feral in society at the moment, that it's like we've had so many years of affluence that all of the popular movements, like critical race theory, gender ideology, everything that's being taught in schools, um, or, you know, repurposing the pride flag to make it not about gay and lesbian people, but to make it about the transgender movement and Black Lives Matter and all those things, these are, they're almost poking for a fight. It's like people are so bored and so tired of this sort of affluent leisure that we live in that it's been, you know, 75 years. Let's have another fight. And one wonders if what's going on in uh, Israel and Palestine and then possibly involving Iran. Well, Iran's already involved, aren't they? But um, might lead us into something that, God forbid, would be the worst massacre that we've seen in um, in 75 years. So that's a major concern. Sorry to be miserable about that. On a personal level, this banking thing is interesting and this lending thing, because obviously we started, I started the Reclaim Party because I was so concerned about free speech which, as we know, is got steadily worse um, it, since I began it. Let's hope that's not correlation, doesn't equal causation. But it's beyond free speech now. It's now freedom to transact. 
So um, I was sharing with um, people yesterday on social media this uh, thing where I would asked, uh, someone had said like a mortgage broker can definitely get you a mortgage sorted. And I said, um, I don't think it will work. And I was informed by the guy who phoned me up and he was really shocked. He was totally shocked. He went, I can't believe it. It's not because you're a politically exposed person. It's that doesn't help, but it's because of your media coverage and what people say about you in the press. So essentially, people are, banking is a transaction, isn't it? It's just a bank. Your job is to look after money, make money, you know, and all of that sort of thing. That's what banks do, invest money. And now they seem to be so political. So it really concerns me that they will stifle anybody's ability to transact based solely around philosophical belief, which should be protected by the Equality Act, but isn't. Because we know that the Equality Act only protects certain characteristics which are indicative of the um of those that lean very heavily to the left which is a shame and this is coming from someone and i genuinely mean this i don't even think i'm particularly right wing i think i'm social lib liberal and i think i'm sort of economically liberal and i think no i'm, I'm not i'm socially conservative and i'm economically liberal i suppose so i don't really think i would fit into the far-right fascist model that um marina hyde would so like me to fit into and that this idea of this banking thing, we must have allowed this to happen because they're not doing it to the other side. So the other side must be working hard to have us debanked, make us frightened, make us frightened of saying things in the, for the prospect of not being able to transact. And we've just let it happen. And the thing that worries me most is that those that are on our side who champion these causes don't necessarily champion these causes for everybody. They champion the causes for themselves. They use it as weapons to aggrandize themselves or situations to aggrandize themselves. And I wonder if that is one of the, the situations on the, on the more commonsensical, critical thinking side of the argument, which is that people want to take credit for things. And I certainly would say I can be guilty of that sometimes, certainly with some of the pro provocations I do. Um, so we're going to lose, uh, not we, because I'm not conservative, but the country's going to lose the general election to a Labour Party who are going to bring in a racial equality act, which is going to uh, formalise diversity, equity and inclusion and ESG in law. So good luck to anyone who happened to not be born with um, more melanin than me, put it that way. And I think that division is really tragic for our society. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I want to feel optimistic and hopeful that something good is going to happen. But um, at the moment, it's impossible because we don't have a conservative government who are conservative and we don't have a viable opposition to them anyway. And we also don't have the little parties don't seem to be able to A, work together or B, cut through with the electorate at all. People would rather in these difficult times either not vote or vote for the other team. There is a marginal increase in, in the Labour vote, but I don't think they're as popular as anybody else as they think they are. So this week, I've, had, I've also thank you from everyone. I've had a lot of messages of support, people saying I'm a bit worried about you. And it, I, I can't tell you how much it really knocks you um, to be, you know, and I'm not saying this isn't self-inflicted and I'm not saying that I'm not responsible for it. I'm completely responsible for what I do. But um, to have the GB News situation take place and then just someone sent me this morning a woman on GB News calling Nigel Farage a knob. So it really disappoints me that we live in a world where a woman can disparage a man in that way but if a man disparages a woman it's the greatest crime since the, oh you can't say that one can you? Um, and you, people have been checking in to see if I'm all right. Uh, I am all right. I would appreciated my week away of rabbit food and lime juice. It did knock me a lot, actually, to, to have the GB News situation with the, uh, and then immediately afterwards have the police situation. If, you know, again, hate to say it, but the law not applied equally is not the law. It's a political weapon. So if you're not going to take umbrage with those marching through the streets of London calling for Jewish blood, which is the blood of a person, which is actually calling for violence against a human being. But you're going to put all your effort into taking action against someone who disagrees with an object. Then um, it seems to me the police are not in a very good shape. So I'm all right. I'm going to, um, you know, we just have to carry on. That's what we have to do. And um, I'm going to try not to 
<laughs> do what I always do. The, problem, the strange part of this is every time I go away and have a little break and have a bit of cucumber and a little bit of lime juice and a sit and a read and I have a really careful think about the state of things and what the best situation and best approach is, I always come back with you just got to go harder at them. Because this is an unforgiving enemy that wants to divide everybody down immutable lines. And it's going to be the end of our society if we don't stand up and protect it. So yeah, message of the week, deport anyone who supports terrorist organizations or defaces the images of kidnapped women and children from Israel. Utterly condemn the terrorist actions of Hamas before you even begin to have the conversation about what is and isn't a disproportionate response. Um, be careful of who you listen to. Be careful of those that say that they're touting the values that we all want to see returned to life, which is critical thinking, content of character ahead of color of skin, and um, and just the common sense of normal thinking. And those that talk about freedom of speech and, and talk as if they defend freedom of speech, be very nervous of those. That's the people I've be uh, become more, much more nervous of than I used to be, because they seem very quick to banish into the background when one does take a few punches for the team. Uh, on the plus side, we have the wonderful and amazing Andrew Bridgen. I can't tell you, you know, Andrew and I have a quite prickly relationship sometimes because we're quite different personalities, but my, uh, my admiration for him is huge. So my hope is we see that there's one guy for, for the politically homeless in Parliament for this period, and he's raised more of the most, more of the important issues that face this country than any one of the 649 other members of that den of snakes than uh, at all. So um, it is my hope, he's wonderful, that spontaneous, amazing round of applause for what he did, for the courage to stand up and never to give in. Andrew Bridgen is an example to us all, and we at the Reclaim Party are blessed to have him. Oh, one last thing, our case against the Department of Education for non-contact child abuse, I think it's non-contact child abuse, you have to check with the barristers, um, is coming along well. So hopefully we will, in the same way as we made a real impact down in Hampshire with the police there and changing their codes of conduct and codes of practice, we can do something to protect our kids from this viciously vile, degrading gender ideology which is being forced down their necks. And it's being forced down their necks from all angles. But it, it, on another level, they're, what the BBC are doing on Newsround talking about white privilege, it's just pure, pure racism. And I know that there are people in this country that are furious about it because you write to us every single day. So we will have a case against the Department of Education and we will clean our schools up and turn them back into places where you're taught how to think, not what to think. Anyway, you have a lovely week. God bless you all.